just heard, here are the simple steps I took to create the string parts. Here's the kinetic string instrument. The first thing we see is a set of four timelines, one each for violins, violas, cellos, and basses. Each timeline contains 64 editable note or rest events. And each timeline has four regions. So let's do a quick dive in. Firstly, I want to choose the grid resolution. That simply means what length each repetition is, whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth, or thirty-second note. For this example, I'll choose sixteenth notes. You'll also see a triplet icon here as well. I'll discuss that later. Now, I'll load the instrument, and you'll see the Superman 1 preset comes up by default. Notice how the cursors move in each section, showing you notes and rest while you hold the notes down. But this preset's not the right feel for the cue I want to make. So I can either load any of the other 30 presets, edit what I already have loaded, Load a factory perpetual motion pattern, which basically fills up the repetitions with nothing but notes and accents. Or choose a popular rhythm for either violins, violas, cellos, or basses, or globally. For this cue, I'll start by choosing a popular rhythm, four sixteenth notes followed by a quarter note. Pretty cool. And notice how each section gets four regions that cycle as I hold down a chord. So let's hold the chord down through the whole grid. That sounded odd. The entire rhythm didn't quite work, did it? That's because the regions have various sizes based on multiples of three in this particular set. The first one has 24 repetitions, while the rest have 12. I want everything to be in multiples of two or four. So in this case, I'll make the regions all 16 repetitions long. The first thing I want to do is choose a 4-4 look to the grid. That way it's easier to edit the regions because all the divisions are based on 4 repetitions rather than 3. Notice how the number of repetitions in each region is conveniently displayed as you edit. Now when I hold a chord through the entire sequence it sounds right. So, I want to change the violin pattern. I'll try a popular rhythm again, but this time just for violins rather than globally. I'll choose the quarter note followed by sixteenth note pattern. Notice that violas, cellos, and basses stayed the same. I can also copy any region I like to any other region in the grid. Also, I could try a random pattern, so I'll do that for cellos here. Mm -hmm. 
Notice that the cellos alone got randomized and not the rest of it. If I want to hear only what happened in the cellos, I can certainly solo them just here. You'll notice that the basses regions are also cycling, even though they're not heard. That's because I'm playing a note that's also in the playable range of the basses. Of course, these ranges can easily be changed here. So after playing around with editing repetitions, I have the following grid pattern. But I want to have every other repetition accented, rather than every four, like it shows right now. Notice that I can choose the accent strengths here as well. For this, I'll choose moderate, which has coincidentally already been loaded. Yes, that's the way I want it to sound. If I want to save this pattern, all I have to do is click the floppy disk icon here and choose Save Pattern. So here I'll name it something like Jet Fighter. But just one more thing for added interest. For a little more punch, I want to transpose the cellos up a fifth. Now, if I look at the MIDI region in my DAW, I see long notes that are held but I can have the entire grid write new MIDI events to show exactly what the rhythms look like musically if I want. All I have to do is engage the MIDI record on the interface, play the cue from the top, and click Stop Recording when I'm done. Now I can drag the MIDI file to any other track in my DAW or onto my file system, and I can use that MIDI file for any other library I choose. And when adding some French horns from the Diamond Symphony and some percussion from Virtuoso Ensembles, I'm done with the cue. Each section's regions are completely polyphonic, so you can hold down a note while playing a melody over the repetitions. But let's say I don't want to have the viola's regions cycle like that. I like the constant notes they have in the region 1 only. I can turn off the viola timeline cycle right here. Or, since I'm playing a melody in the violins, I can turn their repetitions off altogether. You may not have noticed it, but the violins have been playing in octaves. You can turn that off right here. Earlier, I mentioned triplets. Here's how they work. Here's a preset that takes advantage of this. It's called High Triplets 1. If I play a high C, you'll notice it plays triplets. That's because the playable range of the triplets starts at C5 and goes all the way up to E6. If I play below the playable range, triplets will not play. Now if I play notes in and out of the triplets playable range, I'll get a really cool 3 on 2 pattern. Playing around with this will give you endless sophisticated possibilities. In the above example, I've used a tight spiccato. Of course you can broaden the spiccato or even choose another articulation altogether. Of course, a mixer page is included where you can edit all kinds of things such as EQ, velocity and humanization settings, microphone choice, and section mixer.